off screen, I had to make a few configuration changes to the Raspberry Pi in order to remote into it. And I'll show you what those are in just a minute. First, let's see if we can connect to it. So I'll put in the IP address. And I'll accept the security key. And then I'm going to log in as the default user, which is Pi. Press enter. And the default password, which is Raspberry. OK, I'm in. First thing I'm going to do is run a sudo apt-get update to update the repository packages. I have a slow connection, so this may take a minute. OK, that's finished. And now that my update's complete, I'm going to install the remote desktop protocol for Linux. So to do that, I'll type in sudo app-get install xrdp. And this will allow me to remote desktop into my Raspberry Pi. I'll press Y and hit enter to accept. Now I'll just wait for the download to complete and the installation to take place. Once this is done, I can get a graphical user interface to the Raspberry Pi from my Windows computer using the remote desktop client. OK, XRDP has finished installing and now we can test it out. So what I'll do is I'll close my putty session here with SSH and then I'll go to the start menu type in MSTSC for Microsoft Terminal Services Client and this will run the remote desktop client and I'll put in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and we'll see if we can connect I'll put in the username Pi, the default password Raspberry, OK, and I'm connected into my Raspberry Pi and I have a graphical user interface. So this is excellent. Now what I can do is, is I can show you some of the things that I did essentially to get it up and running so I could connect to it remotely. The first thing I did was as soon as I launched it to the monitor separately from this remote connection, I went up here to the network settings and as you can see if you click on it, it'll give you information. There is my wireless setting. So what I did was is I clicked on it and if you click on it you can put in the wireless key and then it'll connect wirelessly. So I did that first. Also, if you want to go back and set up some settings, you can just go to Wi-Fi Networks here, and you can put in a static configuration for your interface, whether it's the wireless interface, because I have a USB wireless dongle, or, or a USB wireless adapter, um, or your ETH0 uh, interface. You can leave it at DHCP, or you can statically configure it here. So that's the first thing to get online. Then if you just hover over it, it'll tell me my IP address. And as you can see, my IP address was 192.168.3.170. And I needed that IP address in order to SSH into the Raspberry Pi. So that's the first thing I did. Then once I know the IP address, by default, the Raspberry Pi launches an SSH server so you can connect. Now, with Raspbian and Jesse, you're also going to want to go to the Start menu, go to Preferences, and run the Raspberry Pi Configuration GUI tool. Now, this utility enables you to do some initial settings. So by default, the first time it boots up, the boot setting is set to desktop so that it will boot you directly to the desktop, not to the command line interface. 
So I changed this from desktop to command line interface. Also, the default setting is to auto log in and log you in as the default user Pi. So I also unchecked this. Well, now that I have a remote desktop connection, I'm going to set up some other settings that need to be done first. The first thing you're going to want to do is expand your file system to use all of the available space on your card. So by default, it doesn't use all of the space. So right now, if I was to look at my drive, it would say something like 98% full. So I'm going to expand the file system so it can use the entire 32 gigabytes of the card. Okay. All right, so that's been done. Also, if you want to change the password from the default, you can do it here. Once again, I prefer to be booted directly to the command line interface and not be logged in. That's my preference. Now, when you do this, if you get to the command line interface, you're going to need to launch X windows with the command start X. So you'll have to do that. All right, let's take a look at our interfaces. If we look at the interface settings, you'll see that the camera interface, the one that takes the ribbon cable, is disabled. You'll also notice that the SPI and I2C interfaces are both disabled. The serial port is enabled. We have a USB serial bus. The SSH connection or the SSH server is enabled by default. So those settings are pretty good. I'm just going to leave them the way they are for now. But later, if I want to come off of my board to a camera or to the GPIO pins, I'll need to enable those. For performance, if you put a heat sink and maybe even a fan on your Raspberry Pi, you can overclock it and get better performance if you want to do uh, processor intensive things like setting up maybe a retro gaming uh, distribution where you could do a Super Nintendo retro gaming station and download ROMs and play them, you'll want to overclock it. Also, you're probably going to set up your localization settings. So by default, the location is set to Great Britain. So I'm going to change that to the USA and click OK. I'm getting a little bit of a lag here because my wireless connection is pretty slow right now. I'm very far from my access point. I'll set up the time zone. And I'll change my keyboard settings. Now, with the remote connection, I've not had luck getting the keyboard settings to pop open or be detected. Now, I'm not sure if it's because I've got this remote connection that it's not able to set it up. But if I want to change these keyboard settings, the last time I did it, I had to do it by changing it directly from uh, the Raspberry Pi and not from my laptop, which I'm connecting to the Raspberry Pi remotely with. So I'll have to change these settings later. All right, I'll click OK. And it asked me that uh, to make these changes take effect, I need to reboot the system. So I'll click yes. And I now have the Raspberry Pi 2 rebooting. When it's done rebooting, I can remotely connect to it again using remote desktop. Or I can just plug in the Raspberry Pi 2 from the HDMI out to a monitor, and I can use it directly with a USB keyboard and mouse. So it's however you want to connect to the device. Uh, I usually prefer to remote in. That way I can do other things and I don't have to have it connected. I can use it as a headless station that, um, or headless computer that I can work from remotely.